Divorcees, when did you know your marriage was over? My wife wanted a break, we'd been married around a year at that point, so I moved out, after about a week. I came back to collect some items and while tidying up I found there was a couple of condoms in the bin sat right on top. No saving the train wreck of a marriage. Honestly she did me a favor. My wife said, I'm her second husband, that she knew her first marriage was over when her husband admitted he allowed their two children to spend several dozen overnights with his stepfather, a man who had molested her husband and his brother when they were children. He'd never told her what happened to him. And when she finally figured it out she flipped her shit. Took another three, four years for that marriage to stagger across the finish line. I found out I was pregnant close to our five-year wedding anniversary. When I asked what he wanted for our anniversary he said an abortion. When I miscarried three weeks later he threw a party for it. The irony of it all is that we got a divorce cause he knocked up another chick that refused to abort cause she was Catholic and needed to be married to him so the child would not be a bastard. He is miserable in another marriage and I have been happily divorced for six years now. When she slammed our bedroom door on her own forehead, yelling at me that she was going to get me arrested with the proof that I beat her up. I was recording her doing it, she was so drunk she didn't notice. I let her run with it, when she told her brothers that I beat her up and sent them pics of the bruises on her face as proof, I sent them the video of her doing it. They never said a word to me. Not a divorce either, but I managed to convince my mother to file for divorce after a full year of my father refusing to speak or even look at her. They were living in the same house, paying the same bills, using the same utilities. He got angry at her over something I don't even remember now, and just decided to pretend she didn't exist. It was after the third time of losing her temper and trashing the house, including throwing a guitar stand at my work laptop and breaking it. She went to her mom's for two weeks and I realized I was much happier without her around. After a week I told her I wanted a divorce. Moral of the story, don't be with someone who thinks violence is an appropriate answer to problems. When I should have known, my spouse sent me an email that said he didn't love me anymore. When I actually knew, he announced his engagement to an 18 yo a few days after the divorce papers we signed. I was a little slow there. When our power was shut off but he had just purchased a new fun car for himself three weeks after totaling his other fun car. I had no idea we were so behind on the bills because he insisted on always being in charge of finances since I just stayed home and didn't work. I opened up my own bank account the next day and put $20 he had given me for groceries in it. Started cleaning houses during the day while my mom watched my kids. Left six months later. Me and the ex just tied the knot and finished moving in together on a earlier that day, went to celebrate with friends that night. One of my buddies was going to crash with us that night so we all took a taxi back. I was in the front so I can translate directions to our cab driver, we were in Japan. About a block away I turn around to tell them we are almost there and they are making out and he is feeling her up. Easy decision after that. When I realized how much abuse I took on a continuous basis. It wasn't physical much, but I would get things thrown at me. Cops came once because the neighbors once thought I was abusing her. She admitted to the cops that it was her throwing things and put a hole in the wall with the shoe she tossed. Don't worry, the cops asked me what I did to piss her off. Told us to keep it down and left. A majority of the abuse was verbal. I could never earn enough money. When I worked over, I was never home and she felt lonely. When I was home I couldn't get everything done she wanted me to do to her level of satisfaction. What made me finally wake up, one of my co-workers said something causally man, she treats you like shit. That is what made me wake up and seek a lawyer. That divorce was the most costly and brutal thing I've ever gone through. Still paying on it, and will be for years to come. When my 5 year old son pulled a hotel key card out of her purse, and she had no reason to have one in her purse. We had some issues, but I thought we were on track to working them out. She was acting nicer to me and things did seem better. It felt like someone had punched me in the chest. When I was in the hospital after delivering our baby via C-section and he asked if he could bring me some food the next day when he came back. I said I wanted a burrito. He said he wasn't going to a Mexican place, he was going to Panera. The next day he walked in with a Panera bag, sat down, proceeded to eat his lunch in front of me. Didn't get me anything because he said, 
you never told me what you wanted. When I found myself wishing he was dead just so I wouldn't have to be married. Now that we're divorced, I can't believe I had those thoughts. He's a great man, a great dad, and my best friend. It wasn't his fault that marriage was suffocating me. If something happened to him now, I'd be devastated. But then, every time he came home I was disappointed that he'd survived another day. Not quite divorced yet, I'm waiting until our youngest is 18 and is no longer a child of marriage, so a bit more time to go. I knew it was over when he prioritized a friendship with a family friend, who was grooming our oldest daughter. There were plenty of other things, but this was the pinnacle moment when I couldn't reconcile his selfish behavior and try to salvage our marriage. We had been limping along for a while and I had been trying to stay together by attempting to do all the work myself. Spoiler, that doesn't work. My ex-husband was extremely controlling and mentally slash emotionally abusive, to the point that I've been diagnosed with PTSD. The moment that made me realize it was over was him dictating what I could and couldn't tell our marriage counselor. The point that actually made me leave was when he finally became physically abusive. It's been a decade, and I still get anxiety attacks seeing men who look like him, or encountering his, very common, name in my day to day. When I told him I was thinking I wanted out of the marriage due to him allowing his family to treat me like shit, and neglecting my emotional needs, and he responded by immediately threatening and abusing me to the point he nearly killed me. I wanted his commitment to couples therapy and his reassurance but obviously that did not happen. I'm sure he knew it was really really over when I threw a glass at his head that exploded behind him the last time he advanced at me, and told him if he touched me again it'd be the last thing he ever did. A month later I happily moved out. Two months into our marriage he forced me. Immediately after he broke down crying when he saw the state of me, told me to take him to the police station, etc. Naively I chose to forgive him and work with him. Yes, extremely stupid of me to do, six to eight months later we had a fight. I don't remember what he asked me, but I finally said the words and screamed at him that he had forced me. Dead calm, smirk on his face, he looked at me and said but you forgave me. I realized who slash what he was then. Took time but I finally left him. It's been years now, but I joined the army to get away from him. Haven't seen him since the day I left for base in 2008. His mom kept saying stuff while no one was around but he wouldn't believe me. Then she would change her whole story when even one witness was around and I looked like a fool. This has been happening and then his grandmother died. His mom told my parents that they should not come for the funeral and she also told me that I should not come to the funeral either. We have a custom as per which a new bride of the family first goes to a happy family event. Since no such event had happened in his family even two years into our marriage. His mom was of the view that we shouldn't attend the funeral. She kept insisting on this point so we did not go. Then she started telling everyone we knew in common about what a shit daughter-in-law she had and how shit my parents were too for not even coming to something like grandmother's funeral. My ex-husband knew what had happened but not once did he call his mother out. Instead he said if I keep saying such things then it would be very difficult for us to live together which in my dictionary means he basically threatened me with a divorce. No one says such things without meaning it. So I knew in my head I was going to get divorced. Just gave myself more than a year to be mentally prepared for it. Once I was mentally ready I straight up told him I wanted a divorce after a heated argument. He was in shock because most Indian women don't ever ask for divorce and keep dealing with the in-laws bullshit all their lives. It's expected of us like breathing is expected of humans. That family can go duck themselves. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.